Hello, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at how Odessa made the rhythmic effect on the synth chords of their song, The Last Goodbye. With this sketch, I aimed to capture the essence of the Odessa track, rather than create an exact remake. It has three sections. Section 1 features the rhythmic effect played by the chord synth. Section 2 is where the drums and bass start playing, and the chords morph into a syncopated groove. Section 3 is where the lead melody comes in. First, we'll go through how to create the synth sound, and after, we'll break down the chords that the synth is playing. We will use Ableton's analog synthesizer. First, change Oscillator 1's wave shape to a square wave. Set Oscillator 2's wave shape to sine wave. Turn on the noise generator. Set the noise frequency to 6 kilohertz, and the noise volume to negative 24 decibels. Click the Filter 1 panel to reveal the filter settings. Turn off the filter envelope by setting ENV to 0. Change the drive mode to asymmetrical 3 to fatten the sound. Change the filter type to low pass 12. Set the resonance to 35%. To manipulate the frequency parameter, we will use Ableton Shaper. Add Shaper after analog. Click Map. Now, Shaper is waiting for a parameter to be selected. Shaper is a really powerful tool. You can map just about any parameter that can be automated as a modulation target. The parameter doesn't even have to be on the same track, and can be a global parameter of Ableton, such as the session tempo. Click the frequency parameter of Analog's filter. The frequency is now grayed out, and is controlled by the shape we draw in Shaper's grid. We want the modulation to occur over a duration of two bars, so we'll set rate to two bars. To get more detailed control of our modulation shape, change the grid to 16. With our rate set to two bars, each of the 16 grid lines now represents an eighth note. Drag the last point to beat four, which is the seventh grid line. Turn off snap so that we are not bound to the grid lines and shift the top point of the curve in between the first and second grid lines. This creates a quick 16th note attack to the modulation shape. Hold down the Alt slash Option key to bend the segments and turn the slope of the curves into a bell shape. Right now, the filter is moving through its full range, 0% to 100%. For the Odessa effect, we'll want to reduce the range from about 4.5 kHz to 11.5 kHz. We can achieve this by changing the minimum to 76% and the maximum to 90%. Now, Shaper moves the filter from 4.6 kHz to 11.4 kHz. Let's go back to analog to finish configuring the synth sound. Click the Amp 1 panel to reveal the amplifier settings. Attack to 5 milliseconds. Decay to 85 milliseconds. Sustain to 0.30. Sustain time to 366 milliseconds. 
and release to 431 milliseconds. Click the rightmost panel to access global settings. Set the number of voices to 16. Set error to 50% to introduce subtle tuning imperfections that will enhance the analog quality of the sound. Now that we have our synth sound, let's create the rhythmic effect using Ableton's arpeggiator. Place arpeggiator before analog. The arpeggiator style determines the pattern of the arpeggiation. All of the styles play one note at a time, except for chord trigger, which plays the entire chord. When rate is set to sync mode, the arpeggiator will play rhythmic subdivisions, snapping from each subdivision to the next. To achieve the rhythmic effect in Odessa's The Last Goodbye, we need to smoothly change the speed of the arpeggiator. By clicking sync, it will toggle to free mode. Free mode allows us to control the rate of arpeggiator in milliseconds rather than subdivisions. The rhythmic effect starts out very fast and then slows down to an eighth note pattern on beat four of the first bar. So how can we arrive at an eighth note now that arpeggiator is no longer synced to subdivisions? We will need to convert beats per minute values to milliseconds. Thankfully, there are many online resources that will do this for us, but here's the formula in case you're curious. I will be using tuneform.com. I'll leave a link in the description. First, we'll need to input our song's BPM. The tempo of Odessa's The Last Goodbye is 115 beats per minute. Now, we can see that an eighth note at 115 beats per minute is 261 milliseconds. The rhythmic effect starts at approximately a 128th note. At 115 beats per minute, a 128th note is 16 milliseconds. Let's draw these two points into an automation lane. Click the automation button, then select the parameter you want to automate. In this case, arpeggiator's rate. With our rate starting at 16 milliseconds and ending at 261 milliseconds, we will be able to continuously move from a 128th note to an eighth note. This is close, but not quite the Odessa effect. We need to curve the automation so that it starts slowing down earlier. Hold the Alt slash Option key and click and hold the curve. Now drag the cursor up. You can try different amounts of curve until it sounds good to you. Or you can hover over the second beat of bar one. You can see that at this point, the rate is 135 milliseconds. If we reference our BPM to milliseconds calculator, we can see that this is close to a 16th note. This is the curve that I settled on, starting at 16 milliseconds, a 128th note, on beat four ending on 261 milliseconds, an eighth note, and by beat two reaching a rate close to 130 milliseconds, a 16th note. Repeat this for all four chords. arpeggiator. Turn on the velocity setting. This will make it so that after each chord is initially triggered, the repetitions created by arpeggiator will rise or fall to the velocity set by the target parameter over the time period set by the decay parameter. Set decay to 953 milliseconds and target to 52. Now, over the course of 953 milliseconds, the velocity of the repetitions will smoothly fall to 52, resulting in the volume of the chord slightly lowering as the rhythmic effect settles. Now let's add effects to bring this sound to life. But first, lower analog's level to negative 32 for more headroom. We'll use drum bus to add punch and low end. Turn on compression. Set trim to negative eight decibels. Set damp to 20 kHz so that it is bypassed. Increase transients to 1. 
set boom frequency to 61.7 Hz, which is B, the key of our song. Set boom to 50% and boom decay to 0%. Now we'll use auto filter to add quick filter movement to each chord repetition. Turn the envelope all the way up to 127. Set attack to 1 millisecond and release to 5 milliseconds. Change the filter circuit to OSR, the filter slope to 24, the filter resonance to 7%, and drive to 3 decibels. Now, the filter will quickly open up with each chord repetition, starting from the frequency we set with the frequency parameter. To get the kind of dynamic motion we hear in Odessa's track, we will automate the frequency parameter. For the first section, start at 1.75 kHz for one bar, and then fall to a lower frequency for the second bar. This will be repeated for each of the four chords. For the first chord, fall to 500 Hz. For the second chord, fall to 600 Hz. For the third chord, fall to 700 Hz. And for the fourth chord, fall to 800 Hz. This creates a gradual increase in brightness through section 1. For section 2, start at 3 kHz and fall to 1.5 kHz for all four chords. For section 3, start at 4 kHz and fall to 2 kHz for all four chords. For the last chord, which functions as an outro, we will start at 6 kHz and fall all the way down to 26 Hz. You can bend the automation curves to smooth the effect. Back to Auto Filter. Add a small amount of LFO modulation to give the filter a bit of movement. Set LFO to 2 and the rate to 1 bar. Now, we'll use Ableton's Echo to add a stereo effect. Set rate to 64th notes. Rate mode to notes. Feedback to 0%. And delay mode to ping pong. The dry wet will be the second parameter we will modulate with Shaper. Back to the Shaper device. Click the menu button on the top right of the grid. Now, there is a list of eight mappable slots that can be assigned to parameters and modulated with the shape. We assigned the first slot to Analog's filter. Click the second slot's map button and then navigate back to Echo and click the dry wet parameter. Now, Shaper controls Analog's filter frequency and Echo's dry wet parameter. To manipulate each parameter differently, we can adjust the minimum and maximum settings of each parameter separately. For the dry wet of echo, set the minimum to 40% and the maximum to 25%. Now the curve starts at 25% and then rises to 40% as the rhythmic effect settles. Let's add EQ8 to bring out the highs and tame the low end. For higher quality, turn on oversampling in the context menu by right clicking. Change band 1 to low cut. Set frequency to 45 Hz and the Q to 0.41. Set band 4's frequency to 2.5 kHz. The gain to 6 decibels and the Q to 0.71. Now, let's tighten up the sound using glue compressor. For higher quality, turn on oversample. Set attack to 0.01, release to 0.1, ratio to 4, lower the threshold to negative 3 decibels, and turn on soft clipping. Add space to the sound with hybrid reverb. Set the pre-delay to 3 milliseconds. Change the convolution impulse response to bigger spaces, shimmering sky left right. Change the mode to parallel. Set blend to 65 slash 35. This makes it so we hear 65% convolution reverb and 35% algorithmic reverb. Change the algorithm to shimmer. 
This raises the pitch of the reverb tail up one octave. Increase modulation to 100%. We will map the dry wet to shaper. Select the third map slot of shaper and then select hybrid reverbs dry wet. Set the minimum to 25% and the maximum to 50% so that the dry wet starts at 50% and then falls to 25% as the rhythmic effect settles. Switch to the reverb EQ. Set the frequency of band 1 to 110 Hz and the slope to 12 decibels. This cuts the low end and prevents excessive rumbling. Now, add a second hybrid reverb to add another layer of ambience. Set mode to parallel, change the convolution impulse response to bigger spaces, arena hall 20 seconds. Set blend to 50-50. Change the algorithm to shimmer. Set the dry wet to 50%. Switch to the reverb EQ. Set the frequency of band one to 110 Hz and the slope to 12 decibels. Set the frequency of band 4 to 4 kHz with a gain of 2 decibels. We'll use the fourth slot of Shaper to modulate Hybrid Reverb's send parameter. When send is set to 0, the reverb has no effect. We only want this reverb to be active during the initial rhythmic burst so we'll set the minimum to 0% and the maximum to 50%. This makes it so that the reverb is active as each chord is triggered and then becomes bypassed as the rhythmic effect settles. To blend the chords into the mix, we'll use compressor to create a side-chained pumping effect. Switch to transfer curve view. Change to peak mode. Click the triangle to reveal the sidechain settings. Turn on sidechain. Set audio from to drums. Set the EQ to high cut. Frequency to 85 hertz and Q to 0.94. Set ratio to four to one. Set attack to one millisecond and release to 10.5 milliseconds. To achieve the pumping effect, Set threshold to negative 32 decibels. Now raise the output by 2 decibels. To add a classic delay effect to the sound, we'll add another echo. Set rate to eighth note, the rate mode to dotted, and the feedback to 50%. Set the built-in reverb to 10%, and the dry wet to a subtle 10%. Now that we've got our chord sound, let's look at how to build this chord progression. The chord progression in Odessa's The Last Goodbye uses four chords. These chords are triads, which are three note chords. B minor, F sharp minor, E major, and D major. The notes of a chord can be arranged and repeated in different positions without changing the name or type of the chord. These different arrangements are called chord voicings. When the notes are positioned close together, they will sound small and compact. To get the chord sounding big like in Odessa's The Last Goodbye, move the bottom note down two octaves. This is an open voicing when the notes of a chord are positioned in different octaves. For the second chord, instead of the bottom note, move the middle note of the triad down two octaves. This creates an inversion, a chord voicing where the lowest note is a note other than the root note. With chords three and four, repeat what we did with the first chord and move the bottom note, the root note, down two octaves. To get the chord sounding thicker, 
arrange the notes in as low an octave as possible while avoiding the bass register. Move the top note of the second chord down one octave. For chords three and four, move the top two notes down one octave. Increase the density of the chords by duplicating notes. Duplicate the top note of chord 1 and 2, F sharp, an octave lower. Duplicate the bottom note of chord 3, an octave higher. For chord 4, add a new note, C sharp, at the top of the chord. This is the 7th and turns the D major triad into D major 7. Voice leading is finding a smooth way to connect the notes of the chords that creates a simple melody. An effective place to do this is on the top notes of the chords. We can connect F sharp of chord 1 and A of chord 2 by connecting these two notes with the only note in between that fits the key, G sharp. We can continue the direction of this motion by connecting the A of chord 2 with chord 3 by adding B, the third note of chord 3. We can complete the staircase shape by connecting the B of chord 3 to A of chord 4. We can finish the same way we started by getting from A back to F sharp by passing through G sharp. Where possible, reflect the voice leading in the lower notes. is a note that is held continuously as the chords change. We will add a high pedal by adding F sharp above every chord. During section three, move the pedal tone to different notes to create a melodic variation. take these chords and turn them into the syncopated groove we hear during section 2, we will have to resample the arpeggiator's MIDI. Create a new MIDI track. Set the input to the track with the arpeggiator, the chord track. Set monitor to off. This removes any latency while recording. Arm the track and record. We have the chord rhythm that Arpeggiator was creating drawn into our piano roll, where we are now free to manipulate it. Before we create the syncopated rhythm of the chords, let's create the drum groove. The kick plays a four on the floor groove, a pattern where the kick plays on every quarter note. Every second bar, there is an additional kick between beats four and one. Use the drum synth kick device to create the kick. Set pitch to 61.6 Hz, which is B, the key of the song. Set decay to 16.5%, envelope to 47.4%. Turn on click to add a short high frequency layer to the sound. 
The claps play on the backbeat, which simply means beats two and four. Use the drum synth clap device to create this sound. Set sloppy to 10%, tail to 39%, spread to 76%, tune to 39.3%, decay to 10.2%, and volume to negative 16 decibels. This sound can be fairly quiet because the snare drum will also be playing on the backbeat. Add an EQ3 to the clap. Set the high gain to negative three decibels. To add some space to the clap, add hybrid reverb. Change mode to parallel and blend to 50-50. Change the algorithm to tides. Tides adds rhythm to the reverb tail determined by the rate parameter. Set rate to 16th notes. Set vintage to subtle to make the sound slightly lo-fi. Switch to the reverb EQ. Set the frequency of band 4 to 4 kilohertz and the gain to negative 4 decibels. For the snare drum, hi-hat, and crash cymbal, I used a drum library called Roots, made for Superior Drummer. You can use any drum kit or drum library and these ideas will still apply. The hi-hat plays straight 16th notes throughout the groove. The eighth notes in between each beat are emphasized by raising the velocity. To emphasize the rhythmic effect that starts as each new chord is triggered, add a crash cymbal on beat one every two bars. Add a snare drum on beats two and four, the backbeat. I copied the kick part from the drum synth kick to add another layer to my kick sound. Here's the full groove with the synth kick and synth clap. Let's go back to the synth chord MIDI and create the syncopated groove. To achieve the Odessa effect, merge the free rhythms into on the grid synced rhythms. Since we were specific with making sure that our millisecond values translated to rhythmic subdivisions, this should be a fairly easy transition. First, find a place to move back onto the grid. I like how on beat two, the rhythm is almost on the grid. So I'll go ahead and quantize this to beat two. From here, you can use rhythmic groupings of two and three sixteenth notes to create the rolling syncopations common to this style of music. this for all of the chords. Next, let's create the bass track. First, let's create the bass sound, then I'll show you how I put the notes together. We'll use Ableton's analog synth to create the bass sound. Click the far right panel and change voices to mono. Set oscillator 1's wave shape to square and the octave to negative 1. Set oscillator 2's wave shape to sine wave and set the octave to negative 2. Click the filter 1 panel to reveal the filter settings. Turn off the filter envelope by setting ENV to 0. Change the drive mode to asymmetrical 3 to fatten the sound. Set resonance to 30%. We will automate the filter frequency. For section 1, hold at 290 hertz. For section 2, move from 290 hertz to 440 hertz. For section 3, move from 440 hertz to 633 hertz. And for the final chord, move from 633 hertz down to 85 hertz. Click the Amp 1 panel to reveal the amplifier settings. Set attack to 5 milliseconds. We will automate the decay parameter. For section 1, start with a longer decay of 2.25 seconds. 
For the rest of the sketch, the decay will start at 2.63 seconds and then fall to 141 milliseconds one beat later. This repeats for every chord. Set the sustain to zero. Release to five milliseconds. And the level to negative six decibels. Beef up the sound using pedal. Turn on sub. Set gain to 10%. Bass to 10%. Set the mid frequency band selector to high, set mid to 20%, and treble to 34%. Add a sidechain pumping effect using compressor. Turn on sidechain. Set audio from to drums, set EQ to high cut, frequency to 84.5 Hz, and Q to 0.94. Set attack to 1 millisecond, release to 14.1 milliseconds and threshold to negative 35 decibels. Add hybrid reverb to add a bit of space. Set blend to 100 slash zero so that we only hear the convolution reverb. Change the convolution impulse response to bigger spaces, shimmering sky left right. Turn on bass mono. Set the dry wet to 25%. Switch to the reverb EQ. Set band 1's frequency to 600 Hz. And the slope to 48. Now that we have our bass sound, let's look at how to create the bass line. Copy the MIDI from the chord track to the bass track. Remove everything but the bottom note. Move the remaining notes up two octaves. Extend the first note of each chord to beat two so that the mix is not overwhelmed by the rhythmic effect. Give the bass line individuality by moving to other notes at rhythmically significant moments. A good place to start is at phrase endings. Just like when speaking, musical phrases come to natural stopping points where you might have a period, comma, or question mark. To me, this is here and here. The first alternative note option is the octave. Let's put octaves at these phrase endings. You can also change the notes that lead into the next chord. For these points, let's try the second alternative note option for bass lines, the fifth or seven semitones. Move chord two's bottom note down one octave. Since the second chord is an inversion, we'll start with the third as the main note and then move to the root as the main note. Now we will incorporate octaves and fifths to create more variety. For the third chord, we will approach it as we did the first chord by adding octaves and fifths. On the fourth chord, we'll start with the root as the main note and then move to the fifth as the main note for the second bar. Then we can add octaves and fifths for more variety. Now that we have our bass part, let's create the lead that comes in during section three. First, we'll create the lead sound, and then I'll show you how I put the notes together. We'll create the lead sound using Ableton's wavetable synth. Set oscillator one to a square wave by moving the wave position slider to 100%. Set fold to 40%. Set oscillator two to a saw wave by setting the wave position slider to 67%. Change oscillator two semitones to positive 12 so that it is an octave higher than oscillator one. Turn on sub. Set gain to negative six decibels, octave to zero, and tone to 100%. Set filter one to low cut, and frequency to 220 hertz. Now let's set up the amplifier envelope. Set attack to 10 milliseconds, decay to 980 milliseconds, sustain to negative 12 decibels, 
and release to 365 milliseconds. Let's configure the global settings. Set volume to negative six decibels and polyphony to mono. Set the unison mode to position spread, unison voices to three and amount to 30%. Now that we have our sound, let's put it into a space using effects. Add echo. Set the rate to eighth note. Rate mode to dotted. Feedback to 90%. Mode to ping pong. And dry wet to 50%. hybrid reverb, change mode to parallel, set blend to 33 67, change the convolution impulse response to bigger spaces, shimmering sky left right, change algorithm to shimmer, set shimmer to 100% and stereo to 200%. Now that we have our sound dialed in, let's look at how to put this melody together. Copy the chord MIDI from the third section to the lead track. Remove everything but the top note. Move the remaining notes down one octave. I only want the lead synth to accentuate the points where the notes change, so I'll remove everything but those notes. The reverb and delay will keep the sound ringing, so we only need to hold the notes long enough to get a full articulation. Finishing touch, we'll add two white noise effects, a rising sound and a falling sound, using Ableton's analog. The fall effect will enhance the initial rhythmic effect of the chords. Turn off oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. Turn on noise. Set color to 22 kilohertz. Click the Filter 1 panel to reveal the filter settings. Set resonance to 20%. Automate the frequency to fall from 22 kHz down to 30 Hz over the course of one and a half bars. Repeat this for every chord. Change the drive mode to asymmetrical 1. Bypass the filter envelope by setting ENV to 0. Select the Amp 1 panel to modify the amplifier settings. Set level to negative 14 decibels. Change attack to 11 milliseconds. Decay to 626 milliseconds. Sustain to 0.5. Sustain time to negative infinity. And release to 500 milliseconds. Change the envelope velocity sensitivity to zero. Let's enhance the sound with effects. Add EQ8. Set band 1 to low cut. Set the frequency to 350 hertz. And the Q to 0.71. Reverb is essential to this type of effect. Add hybrid reverb. Change mode to parallel. Set blend to 33 67. Change the convolution impulse response to bigger spaces, arena hall 20 seconds. Change the algorithm to tides. Tides adds rhythm to the reverb tail. We want a big sound with this effect, so set decay to 12 seconds. Set size to 100%. Tide to 100%. Rate to eighth note and stereo to 150%. Set the dry wet to 50%. The rising effect is the same as the falling effect with a few small changes. Change the filter resonance to 50%. The frequency is automated with a curve that starts at 30 Hertz and moves up to 22 kilohertz over the course of two bars. This only occurs leading into the beginning of each section. 
set the level of amp 1 to negative 9 decibels. In EQ8, set the frequency of band 1 to 300 Hz. In hybrid reverb, set the dry wet to 100%. Automate the title rate so it starts at 16th notes and increases to 64th notes, then suddenly drops back down to 16th notes at the end of the curve on beat 1. As always, I hope you enjoyed and found this video useful. If you'd like to download the project file containing everything I've shown here, you can do so on my Patreon page, which I have linked below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.